Alright, so next up is tabular integration. Tabular integration is basically the shortcut method for integration by parts. You use it when you've got an integration by parts problem that you know is going to take multiple steps. So, so when, when does that happen? It basically happens when you have a presumably high power of x multiplied by some function that could be integrated multiple times. So in, in the previous video, um, we had done the problem that was like the integral of it was the, the integral of x squared e to the negative x dx. This was a high power of x. This was a function that I know I'm going to be able to integrate multiple times over and over and over again. Okay. So that's when you use tabular. Let's get right into the first example. So here it is. Um, I have a high power of x, 6x cubed, and I have a function that I could integrate multiple times. So here's how, in, uh, how tabular integration works. We make a table, because it's, haha, it's tabular integration. You make a table, and on one side, you're going to take derivatives, and on the other side, you're going to take antiderivatives. So I'm going to put 6x cubed on this side, and I'm going to put the sine of 3x on this side. Then what I do is I take derivatives of this side until I hit 0, right? So I get 18x squared, then I get 36x, then I get 36, and finally I get 0. Okay. Um, the next step after that is, like we might as well just do it right now, change the sign of the even rows. So like this is row number 1, so we don't change that sign. This is row number 2, so that one changes sign. This is row number three, that's odd, so we don't change the sign. This is row number four, that's an even row, so we change the sign of that row. Okay. Now on the other side, I'm supposed to take repeated integrals. Right? So what's the integral? Like, and, and so what I'm going to ask you guys to do, pause the video, write down what these four integrals are going to be. Right? You should have negative one-third cosine of 3x, remember our chain rule, then you'll have negative one-ninth sine of 3x. Then you'll have positive one-twenty-seventh cosine 3x. And finally, we'll have one over 81 sine of 3x. Okay? And now we're actually getting really close to being done. What you do now is you multiply diagonally, right? You do this one times this one plus this one times this one, plus this one times this one, plus this one times this one. And you sort of stop when you hit zero. When you hit zero, I'm actually going to scroll down and start writing down the answer, and then we'll talk about what happens at the end. This is going to be a long answer. What I do now is I, I so I write these things down, right? I'm going to write down the, the first one, the, the 6x cubed times this one, right? So I'm going to end up with negative 6 thirds x cubed cosine 3x. Okay. Then positive 18 ninths x squared sine 3x. Then plus 36 27ths x cosine 3x. So then where are we? Then we are at minus 36 over 81 sine of 3x. And then the last thing you do is you do plus, actually, I mean, yeah, yeah plus, we multiply straight across. And you do the integral of that. So it's the integral of 0 times the other side. So I'm going to write it 0 times that stuff, dx. You may feel like that's the weird step. Why would you do that? Think for a minute about what the integral of zero is. Like, pause the video for a second. What is the integral of zero? What thing out there has a derivative of zero? Well, a constant has a derivative of zero. That is where your plus c comes from. Right? We could simplify this. I, I don't know that I want to make you guys take the time to do it, so I'm going to pause the video, write the whole thing down, and that way you can see what it is. I'm not... It's not terribly necessary at this point. So that's our final answer for this problem. Um, simplified and everything. 
Next up, I kind of wanted to give you the, the steps for performing a tabular integration. Um, you know, whether or not you feel like you need to write these down, go for it. I, I just, I, I felt like we should have them. Um, I don't even know that I'm really going to take the time to read all of these. Um, all the steps that we just ran through in the last problem are what these steps are. I just figured I'd write them down in case you want them in your notes. Okay. So here's another example of a problem where we know we're going to want to use tabular integration. Um, we know that we want tabular integration because we again have a power of x and something I could integrate multiple times. Um, we'll sort of deal with the bounds at the end, um, but for now I'd like you guys to pause the video um, and, and work through this integration by parts on your own. If you, uh, sorry, tabular integration on your own. Um, if, if you need to, um, you know, you can see what my setup is before you do it, uh, but then I'd really like you to do the computation by yourself. So the setup of the table is that I've got my derivative row, sorry, column, and my integral column. I'll put x squared on this side, e to the x over 2 on this side. My repeated derivatives are 2x, 2, and 0. And then I go back and change the signs of the, uh, of the even row. Um, I suppose you'd put a negative here, but negative 0 doesn't really make sense. Um, antiderivatives on the other side, this is 2e to the x over 2. 4e to the x over 2, and finally 8e to the x over 2. Okay. Next step is multiplying diagonally, down this way, down this way, down this way, and remember we're also going to multiply straight across to get our plus c. Right? But because this problem has bounds on it, I don't really need my plus c, so we can sort of stop at the, you know, at, at the diagonal point. Right? So at this point, my integral has become 2x squared e to the x over 2 minus 8x e to the x over 2 plus 16e to the x over 2. And this entire thing is being evaluated from 0 up to 2. So now all I have to do is the evaluation. We plug in 2 and we get 8e to the first power minus 16e to the first power, plus 16e to the first power. It's that one. Minus, now we plug in 0. 0 minus 0, plus 16. So let's see here. These things eliminate. And it looks like all I have, this is a really nice answer, 8e minus 16. And that is the value of this integral done with tabular integration. Um, tabular integration is really nice. It goes really quick. Um, you know, some of them sort of are a little bit tediously long, um, but I'm hoping you guys won't have a whole lot of these problems to practice. And that'll let you focus on just sort of getting the mechanics down and, and working carefully through these problems.